Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that talab al-ilmi faridah ala kulli muslim, that seeking knowledge is mandatory, obligatory upon all Muslims, male and female. And knowledge in Islam is ideally, essentially, what ma qara Allah wa ma qara Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What the Prophet, what Allah has said and what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And anything that benefits humanity, anything that is beneficial, is not against Islam, is not contravening the, contravening the principles of Islam, anything that is beneficial is considered to be the, you know, the wider understanding of ilm or knowledge, uh, knowledge in Islam. The very first commandment in the Qur'an, the very first command or imperative that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through Angel Jibreel was Iqra, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khanaq like Read, read in the name of your Lord who created. Right, read, study, learn, understand, right, comprehend, perceive, and convey, and teach, and spread to others. We are an ummah of learning. Our first, I mean, the first command in the Quran that was revealed was to learn. But unfortunately, we've become an ummah where most people are illiterate. Most people don't understand the Quran, don't learn the Quran, are illiterate. In the UK, Muslims are one of the most um, highest, we have the highest Ill, uh, Ill, uh, illiteracy uh, figures in the UK and probably around the, around the globe. And that's probably due to a number of different factors, you know, poverty and, you know, many other different factors. But we have an opportunity in the UK. And brothers and sisters, you know, what is happening in, in Palestine, in Burma, in the, in the Uyghur Muslim, others, right? They are literally surviving. They're trying to survive. We, alhamdulillah, there are challenges we're facing, but we are living in relative, relative comfort, right? We have opportunity in the UK to study. We have opportunity to work. We have opportunity to live. We have opportunity to help uh, others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us, well, on the day of judgment, right? you had this opportunity. Your brothers and sisters over there did not have the same opportunities that you had and you, you are having. So what did you do with your time? What did you do with your money? What did you do with your body? What did you do with your uh, free time? So it's an amana, this free time that we have, the money that we have, the, the comforts that we are enjoying is an amana, is a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will be asked, we will be questioned on the day of judgment. How did we spend this amana? How did we, how did we expend this, uh, this amana? Right? As I, you know, we mentioned this the other night that not everyone be, can become a scholar. Right? Not everyone is, you know, has the desire to memorize the Quran, memorize hadith books. Not everyone has the desire or the passion uh, or the patience to do to a PhD, which is fine. We have different skills. We have different abilities and capaci capacity. Right? But what Allah says and what the Prophet says is that if we are not able to study, at a base level we have to study something, the Fardul Ain. But beyond that, when it comes to becoming scholars, uh, this is Fardul Kifaya. And there are some people who are fulfilling that Fardul Kifaya, right? Fulfilling that communal obligation. If, if a group of people are not fulfilling the obligation, the rest of us will be sinful. Allah says, right? That, it, you know, if it weren't for a group of people from a community who go out, Right? That there has to be a group of people who go out and who seek, uh, seek knowledge. And those who do not do that, who do, do, those who do not have the appetite or the perseverance or the patience, because not everyone can be, become an IT expert, not everyone can become an academic, not, right? And not everyone wants to be. But everyone has their uh, you know, um, uh, uh, capacity, everyone has the ability, every, everyone has the skills, and we have to utilize that skills. So if we are entrepreneurs, for example, Allah SWT has given us skills in entrepreneurship, or has given us, you know, uh, understanding of how to do business, and we have become successful in our business, right? And we are busy ourselves in the business, support students of knowledge, support scholars, and that you will get the same rewards as 
the scholar who's studying and also teaching and conveying and giving da'wah to, uh, to the uh, Muslim community, right? So, in a way, there, are, there is no excuse, really, right? And so this charity gift of uh, knowledge is about giving gifts to people that we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain gifts, right? The gift of life, the gift of iman, the gift of time, the gift of health, right? The gift by this breathing. Those gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, given us, gift of wealth, right? We have to give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? We have to give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the, um, the tongue that we have, the hands that we have, the body that we have, the, the eyes that we have, everything that we have bestowed upon by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us, these are gifts and blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have to show gratitude. How do we show gratitude? Right? Three ways. Three ways of, three main ways of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, right? Ashukru bil qalb. That we show gratitude with our hearts with our mind, that, that everything that we have in terms of blessings, our children, our wealth, our time, our degrees, whatever we have in terms of blessing, all these are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to affirm and have conviction and understand, have iman that all these blessings are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Not from our own handiwork, not from our own intelligence. Qarun in the Quran, Allah men mentions that he was given, you know, massive amount of wealth. He was like the Jeff Boz of, of that time, right? But he did not attribute that knowledge that he gained. A, he was a physician. That knowledge that he gained and the wealth that he gained, he did not attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, this is from my own understanding. This is from my own handiwork, my own knowledge, my own my own learning, knowledge. And he did not attribute that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and the earth swallowed, swallowed him up and those who desired to be like him. There are different groups. There are those who envied him, <laughs> those who desired to be like him. Right? And they did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So firstly, ashukru bil qalb is showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our heart. And then is ashukru bil lisan. We show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the gifts that we have been given with our tongue. If we have knowledge, we convey it to others. Right? If we have uh, 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 writing skills, we write about Islam, we give that da'wah to people. And we say, alhamdulillah, right? ashukru lillah. And then finally, ashukru bil amal that we show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the actions. And this is the important part here. As I mentioned, that if we are entrepreneurs, if we have a business, if we, you know, alhamdulillah, we, are, we have a house, we are, we are working, right? Then we have, to, we have to pay a zakah and give extra, right? Zakah is the baseline, but give extra in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? If we have a good, if we have a skill, right? Now we have, you know, this whole, you know, um, this whole uh, online could not be possible without the help of the skills attained by our brothers Anas and Anas and uh, Rafat, right? And I know they're listening. Uh, they're listening, right? They're busy. They're talking among each other. But I know they're listening, right? The skills they have, we'll never be able to do it. Yes, you know, they're, they're working full time, and you know, they have all these equipment and they have all these sk uh, skills that they've uh, they've gained. Right, and obviously, you know, no one can ask them to do anything, everything possible. But they have the skills; they should also help good causes. Right, they, they help good causes. Those who are who, who who's good at football, for example, they're organizing fo uh, good at football games, raise awareness, raise awareness about Islam. So there's so many avenues, so many ways, so many, so many channels to do good. Those skills that we have gained, yes, we benefit ourselves, right, but we benefit others more. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the definition of a Muslim, the definition of a Muslim is, right, that the best among the believers are those anfa'uhu linnas. That the best among the believers, best among the Muslim are those who are most beneficial to others. Are the most beneficial to, uh, to others. So, 
you know, join us insha'Allah. And the most important thing, one of the most, one of the most important things that you, we can do is revive Islamic education. Because through knowledge, when a person has understanding, when a person has knowledge, he has the lamp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person does not have knowledge, authentic sacred knowledge, then that person will be blind and he will walk upon this earth blind. Right? And there are different degrees. Allah says in the Quran, that Amman huwa qanitun ana illayli. Right? That is the one who is standing in the night praying during the day and during the night. Is the one who is saying, Right? Is he the same as the one who, you know, who, who's not doing that and is the one who is seeking knowledge? Who is seeking knowledge and who has knowledge, the one who has not. Are they the same? They're not the same. You cannot compare because the one has the guidance, the lamp of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is guiding other people and she is guiding other people and the other one has not, hasn't got that, right? But as I said, knowledge is anything that is beneficial. So if, you have, if a person has skills, right, utilize it in the best way. You know, video skills, recording skills, editing skills, right? Uh, uh, designing graphics and, 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 and posters, right? You have uh, write, good writing skills, you have good project management uh, awareness and, uh, and skills, right? You have uh, a good understanding of fundraising, right? right? If you can't, if you don't, you know, some people might say, I can't give money, right? You know, I've seen people like, they know I'm, I'm on GSA, I can't give money, right? And there are people who are in that situation, unfortunately, right? That's fine. Fine meaning that, you know, yes, no one, no one can force you to give money that you don't have, right? But you can go to others, who, your family members, and say, donate, and you'll get the reward also. But you may have some skills, as I mentioned. You have some skills, give your time, utilize your time in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Discussing one thought came to my mind actually um, about the importance of having people who have a a good traditional understanding of Islam I, and I emphasize traditional understanding of Islam. There are in academia, you know, I'm not an academic myself, but you know, I've done research papers and dabbled into academia a little bit here and there. And I know I have friends who are in academia, and they say that Muslims who are in academia, academia now, alhamdulillah, this is changing slightly, but even Muslims who are in academia, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of misunderstanding about Islam, and there's a lot of Orientalism, Orientalist understanding of Islam in higher education in the UK and even globally. So what we need are those Muslim brothers and sisters who have a, a pretty good then they may not be scholars, right, and fuqaha and muftis, but have a good foundation, good understanding of traditional values and traditional um, Islamic knowledge for them to go into academia and challenge those misconceptions, challenge those stereotypes that unfortunately are prevalent in the higher education system in the UK and, and globally, so they, are, they, so they can research and academically, intellectually, challenge uh, the status quo, status quo. And we can only do that if individuals are there in large numbers, not in small numbers, but in large numbers. I emphasize have, who have an apt, who have an adequate understanding of the traditional Islam, so they can go in and study and learn and research and dispel and disturb, if you like, the status quo. Because status quo generally is not something that is affable towards the Islamic teachings, affable towards the Islamic principles. So we need men and women, brothers and sisters, to go in and, and, and challenge that, inshallah. So with your support, uh, with your du'as, inshallah, that can be done. We start somewhere, we start little by little, inshallah. And I know gift of knowledge already um, in the last uh, uh, years have uh, had supported a number of different uh, individuals, brothers and sisters, to do, carry out PhD research at higher education uh, in the UK. And they are now, you know, lecturers and they are now, you know, in the community as well as lecturing in higher education and, inshallah, challenging and dispelling some of those misconceptions that people have, Muslims and non-Muslims have about traditional Islam and traditional understanding uh, understanding Islam.